We have a lot to get through. Hey friends, it's your good friend Tim Campbell Smith, digital marketing consultant, trainer, and apparently student, and today I am continuing on my adventure with Athabasca University and sharing with you what I've learned so far about the university, and this video is going to be all about different things you should know about studying at Athabasca University. Please note, this is not a great introductory video. If you are just starting out at Athabasca, maybe you're even thinking of applying to and study, starting to study at Athabasca, I'll link somewhere with this uh, video, uh, the introductory video that I've done, so you can go watch it. This is more for people who have just, who have started out and to help with continuing on the journey. I've taken a few courses. Uh, I'm challenging for credit a class, so that's a cool experience. Um, and now I can start to report back my findings. I'm not going to be continuing with Athabasca, more on that in a little bit, because I'm pursuing a program that's not offered through the university and closer to home. But before I part ways from Athabasca for a little bit, I want to share some things that I've learned about how to really navigate this online university. I'm going to be sharing a lot of advice and general tips and tricks, so for ease of navigation, check below with this video. I've timestamped a lot of it. Make sure you stick around until the end where I'm going to answer the most popular question on social media, what are the easiest courses at Athabasca? And we're going to unpack that question. I want to thank, uh, I have a couple friends who asked to remain anonymous, some upper year students who were able to answer some questions from later on in the degree. I'm still, you know, as much as I know, still starting out, but I got some help from some upper year students to answer some of the questions today. So thanks to them. Important disclaimer, all information was accurate at the time of recording. I've done my due diligence on everything I'm going to share, making sure to get it, that it's up to date and accurate. But before you accept anything in this video as gospel truth, make sure you double check as well. Before we go too far as well, you'll want to make sure that you like and subscribe for all things digital marketing, uh, consulting, teaching, and training. Okay, so this is where I'm going to refer to my notes, and I'm going to start with general advice. Things I wish I knew, and I had started with early, and I knew early on. Number one, and this is a big catch-all for a lot of different things, but please note the degree requirements you start with may not be the degree requirements when you end. Now, that has a couple caveats. One, you may think that there's a certain course you want to take or you have to take, but that may change. When I started with Athabasca, I was doing the Bachelors of Management program. I had one of three math classes I had to choose, Calculus 1, Linear Algebra 1, or Business Math. Obviously, I didn't take any math and I wasn't, I'm not very good at math, so I thought, I'll do the business math. But when I started, the business math was no longer being offered. It's now been a year and it's still not being offered, and I would have had to have gone to linear algebra or calculus. That said, you can, you can take courses through other universities and have those credits apply. So I applied to have a, a business math credit from Thompson River University count as my business math, and I actually got approval for it. So I could have done it uh, and gotten the credit for it. But I was really set on taking one course and that one course meeting that part of my degree requirements. And that course is no longer offered and Athabasca didn't provide any explanation why. So. Please note to do that, you have to get approval from Athabasca University for your replacement to be approved, but it's a pretty simple form to fill out as long as you get all the course information from the other university, and then you can get your approval. I got mine in two days. The other side to this, though, and where how your degree requirements may change, Athabasca is really easy as a university versus other universities and colleges to change your major. Your major may change. I... As after doing the, my first course, I realized I'm like, I don't actually want to continue studying business. I'm actually thinking of changing careers, which is why I'm not even continuing with Athabasca. And so I changed majors and changing majors at Athabasca is really easy. You just do it through your online portal, that immediate student portal, and it's really easy. Give yourself permission to do so and tie it to career goals. Next, and this is really important, and it's easy to say, and I think I said this in my first video, but I've got to drive this home. Be prepared to teach yourself from a textbook and to just constantly teach yourself from a textbook. So many of the courses with online learning, you know, Athabasca doesn't, it depends on the course and more on that in a little bit, but some courses, they just kind of give you a textbook, they give you a reading book and they say, read this, do these assignments, and you're done. This is where I'd recommend having like a dedicated uh, tablet. I personally use an iPad because I just use the, uh, the Kindle app so I can read my textbooks and highlight my textbooks. Um, 
on digital and something easily easy and accessible that I can hold if I don't get the printed textbooks. Sometimes I want the printed textbooks because they're easier to work with. But uh, when it comes to learning from a textbook, make sure to have a dedicated device to read from those textbooks. Next, this advice comes from ironically me being a teacher and a student, but I want to remind you that learning how to learn is just as important, is just as normal a part of the process as learning the content of your courses. Learning how to learn is just as important. A lot of a lot of concerns in online communities on Reddit, on Facebook, on WhatsApp were around the process of learning and the requirements of learning and and I constantly told folks, like, remember, you're also learning how to learn. You're learning how to follow instructions. You're learning how to learn in this unique setting. And especially because Athabasca is an online university, it's super self-directed. So learning how to navigate the system is just as important, is just as valid, is just as much a journey as what you're learning in your degree. Next, and, and please note, there's no way Athabasca University ever could have prepared me for this. But if you want to learn about the school, and if you want to build communities of people, I want you to go to Reddit, and I want you to go to Facebook. And eventually you'll end up on WhatsApp. There are so many details, so much information, and so many communities of people on Facebook and on Reddit. And then people tend to form WhatsApp groups um, as study groups and as course groups. And joining those was a game changer for me. It was really helpful to find a community, to find study buddies, to find accountability partners, to bounce ideas and to share things with. So if you, if you want to find your community and you want to find people to prepare for the university, go to Facebook, go to Reddit, and form WhatsApp groups. Next, something you should know if you don't know this already, the quality of individual courses that you take are super inconsistent. It usually depends on the instructor, the history of instructors, and the course. Let's talk about my two psych courses. So psych, Psychology 1 is kind of divided into two courses, 289 and 90. 289 is Psychology as a Natural Science, 290 is Psychology as a Social Science. They cover different units. I started with two Psych 290, and first things first, the course was truly read this textbook, read this textbook, read most of this textbook, do the quizzes, write the exam. The end. Two essays. So the prof hadn't built in anything extra. There was nothing additional built in. It's just kind of whatever you got with the textbook and then you just have to read it and go. Though I will note, and this comes down to like the inconsistency in quality, my instructor reached out to me personally. I saw the class list for my Psych 290 course. There were over 600 of us in the course. My instructor reached out to me and said like, hey, I noticed like you've got all these things done, but I'm still missing a quiz one from you. And I was like, oh yeah, here's my situation. And he was really cool about it. Versus like an accounting prof who like we never heard from, she didn't add anything to the course either. She had just had like a read this textbook, write the exam kind of course. Versus then you have Psych 289 when I got into my Psychology as a Natural Science course. It had all these extra activities and supplemental readings and things to study. So I started to see like, oh, you can have a course with lots of additional, you know, resources and parts. So it totally depends on your instructor and the course. You may find that there's an inconsistent quality among the courses. Next. You do not have to do the courses as they are presented, either in the order for your degree or on the individual course level as they are presented. Uh, when I did Psych 290, Psychology as a Social Science, I skipped chapters one and two which was history of psychology and research methods, because I had a suspicion that I was going to be exposed to that in content later on in the course. And it turns out I didn't need those first two chapters to do the other chapters. And I found being exposed to it in other ways made me far more prepared for those first two chapters. So, and that's when my instructor had reached out and said like, hey, I never got a quiz one from you. And I said, yeah, because I'm not doing it first. I'm doing it last after I've been exposed to it lots of different ways. And I suspect anatomy and physiology, which is a six credit um, science course, kind of works the same, right? There's, um, and this is some advice I got from a student, like, at the beginning, you kind of start with some cellular biology, some chemistry, but you get exposed to that stuff throughout as you learn about the whole body system. So you can go and do the, the other parts first. You don't always have to do a course exactly as it is presented to you online. Next, to succeed at Athabasca and within a degree program, 
the one skill you do have to develop is the ability to meticulously follow instructions. When it comes to how to do the degree, you are driving this bus, you are in control. This is why degree works is so important. More on that in a little bit. This is why you have to check your degree requirements, your course requirements, the parts of the course, and then within the course, follow those instructions. If you don't understand, ask. If you don't like the response you get, ask again, ask for clarification, go above and beyond, ask for help when you need it because your success at Athabasca University is dependent on your ability to follow instructions. Which is ironic, because attention to detail is not my strong suit, but so far I'm doing pretty well. So many complaints I saw on social media, particularly Facebook and Reddit, came down to people not following instructions. Follow those instructions. My first psychology paper, I got a 77, and I lost 10 marks. I would have gotten an 87, but I was 20 words over the word count. And I thought, it's just 20 words. No, nope, I got clocked hard for it. On my second essay, I got 99. You know what I got clocked for? On my title page, I didn't put an ampersand for the, uh, in, and instead I wrote and, and I didn't write the word tutor beside my tutor, and I didn't write the word student beside my name. Those tiny, tiny, tiny little formatting details, I got clocked for. And it comes down to following instructions. Next, let's talk about exams and exam courses. I don't have official data, data on this, but after looking at a lot of courses, and especially for this video, I found rough, it's more than 50%, maybe around 60% of courses at Athabasca University have a final exam. You're gonna have to do exams in your university career. But Athabasca does something unique to this university, which is not normal in most other universities, which is many of those courses with a final exam, you must pass the exam to pass the course. And sometimes you have to pass the exam with more than a 50, which is a standard pass. So in Psych 289, for example, you can't just pass with a 50, you have to pass with a 60 to pass the course. So you can, and I saw examples of this in comments, you can fail a course with a 60. And I, and I saw a case where someone failed a course with a 60 because they got 40% on the final exam. So watch out for your exam courses and make sure in the course descriptions, they always say it really clearly in the course description under evaluations, if you have to pass the exam to pass the course and what grade you have to get. Speaking of unhappy with exams and failing exams. If you fail an exam or you're unhappy with an exam, also unique to Athabasca, you can rewrite it. Now here's a unique rule and loophole that a lot of people ask about. If you fail your exam or you're unhappy with it, you can apply, you file an application to rewrite your exam. You have to file it within 90 days of writing your original exam. I'm checking my notes to get that right. Even if it's after your contract end date. Courses have contract start and end dates when you start and when you end them. You can write your supplemental exam even if you failed after a contract date. So say I take a course in this, uh, January and it ends in June and my exam is June 25th and I fail my exam on June 25th. I can submit the paperwork on June 26th to rewrite a supplemental exam to try and pass the course, okay? So remember that. If you fail your first attempt at an exam, you can always apply to rewrite the exam. Now, please note, you're not going to get the exact same exam. Athabasca notoriously for every course, for every midterm, for every exam, and this is just good teaching practice, has a bank of questions, a large bank of questions, and you get randomly assigned questions out of the bank. So you will not have the same exam twice, but you will have a chance to rewrite. So, you know, in reverse fashion, let's just talk about the raw act of booking exams and if you ever have to change them. When you have a course that has an exam, first things first, your exam date is not automatically set for you. Your exam is not automatically set for you. You don't just get to click a button on Athabasca's website and start writing it whenever you want. You have to book it. You actually, we call it requesting it. You request your exam. It's a two-part process, one with Athabasca, another with a proctor. So you start with Athabasca by requesting an exam, and then you go to your proctor 
or Proctor platform. Athabasca recommends, and I've done my exams through ProctorU, which is a huge platform designed just for proctoring university and college exams. Let me start here. Give yourself a month from the date of applying for your exam to the date of writing your exam. Even if you start a course, you, you've already done it or you already know everything, whatever, and you want to write the exam right away, give yourself a month. Just in case, for wiggle room, please give yourself a month. And here's a tip as well. When you start a course, book the exam right away. Request your exam right away and request your exam on a certain date. That way you give yourself a deadline. You know when all the material has to be finished and, and you know like you'll need a week or, or however long you need to study. So every exam, every midterm as well, has to be proctored. This is part of Athabasca being accredited and certified as a university. The midterms and the exams have to be proctored. You have two options. One is to choose your own proctor. Athabasca has a long list of approved proctors across Canada that you can use, or you can go to ProctorU. I think most people go to ProctorU. ProctorU is online, it's accessible from anywhere, anyone can access it. Here's where things get confusing though, and where people have a breakdown when it comes to exams. Athabasca has certain responsibilities and your proctor has different responsibilities and requirements. Athabasca, when it comes to midterms and exams, Athabasca's only responsibility is to send to the proctor the exam and to collect the exam written, unwritten as it is, and then to process the mark. The proctor's responsibility is to receive the exam or the midterm, to watch you do it and record it and validate and make sure that you didn't cheat, and then to hand the exam back to Athabasca, written or unwritten. This means that most of what you'll want to do with your with your exam, whether you have questions, questions about how it's going to go, or you want to reschedule, is done through your proctor. A lot of students online complain about Athabasca when it's usually actually proctor you or whoever their proctor is. They really are separate Athabasca from whoever your proctor is, so just make sure you're going to the right organization for the right thing. Next, and nobody explained this to me, this is one of those like, I wish I had known this day one, this was really important. Use your degree works. Degree works is a platform available to all students based on your program and depending on whenever you register into your program, your degree works will show you the list of required courses. And as you start completing courses, it starts checking them off for you. Now, degree works may have some errors. It may codify some courses as one thing or another. This is when you'd have to go talk to your advisor. But degree works will show you your progress towards your degree. Use that to answer questions. There are a lot of questions on social media with people asking like, what courses should I be taking for my program? What's required of me? It's in your degree works. Just know though, if a course doesn't get codified the right way, then you'll have to ask for it to be uh, codified a different way from your advisor. One example that I saw, I don't know if this was successful, but just to make an example, Psych 289, Psychology as a Natural Science. Apparently someone took it, try, um, it is codified and labeled as both a science and a social science credit. Degree Works put it in their transcript as a social science, but they wanted it to count as a science course. So an advisor had to go in and change it to be a science course, which is apparently possible. Next, let's talk about a situation unique to Athabasca. Some universities have this, not all of them do. Athabasca flaunts it and makes it easily available, and it's called the challenge for credit process. If you have enough experience or training or have taken a course somewhere else, maybe you didn't get credit for it though, through Athabasca University, you can challenge it for credit. Basically what that means is you're saying to the university, I don't think I should have to take this course. I think I've demonstrated the learning outcomes and it should count towards my degree that I already know this. You have to, let's start here. You have to make a damn good case for why you shouldn't have to take a course. I uh, did marketing, um, marketing one, the marketing one course, which I think was a 300 level class. And I said, I don't want to take this. I don't think I should have to take it because I have taught marketing one at the college level and the university level. I know this stuff. I've been a practicing digital marketer for, at the time of recording, seven years. I shouldn't have to take an intro to marketing course. 
that uh, my advisor said that was a very good case to make. Um, but then you still have to prove somehow, some way that you know what you're talking about. I have to write the final exam for marketing and I have to get a 60%. I can't pass with a 50. I have to pass with a 60 on the final exam. And if I do, then I get credit for it. This is the challenge for credit process. Now, I'm going to switch this. So this has been a lot of like my own advice and things I wish I knew. Let's get to some of the most commonly and popularly asked questions. I'm going to answer some popular questions, especially the little ones that are a little nuanced that you can't always just get from social media. Question number one, is Athabasca University even a good university? Is it accredited? And how hard is it? It is a good university like any other university. And yes, it is fully accredited as a, a Canadian university, holds up to all the other accreditations that all the other universities have. In fact, some of their professional programs are even recognized uh, by different professional associations. So I looked into the Counseling Psychology Program and the, the College of Psychotherapists of Ontario, I believe, recognized Athabasca's program. So that's a pretty good sign, right? The College of nurses recognizes Athabasca's program. So that's a pretty good sign. Yes, it is accredited. It is legit. Athabasca is as good a university as kind of you put into it. It is, it's good. It's fine. It's got the same workload. And I've been to university before. So like, I can definitely speak from experience as well. It's got the same kind of workload. If anything, though, with Athabasca, you have to be driven as hell because it's completely independent. You are driving this bus. You are not bound by a timetable and showing up at certain times and guaranteed midterms at certain dates and guaranteed support and exams. You have to be driven. So if anything, that makes it a little bit harder. Can you get funding to go to Athabasca University? Yes, though I'm gonna say this is widely outside my area of expertise and I definitely had to go to others for help. So I know in Alberta and I know in Ontario, it is very easy to get, not very easy, but it's very easy to get funding. Yes, you can get funding to go to Athabasca University. So whatever the program is in Alberta for student funding for post-secondary, you can get in Ontario where I'm based out of, it's called OSAP, the Ontario Student Assistance Program. You can get OSAP to study at Athabasca University. Check with your funder on their requirements though and their protocols. I wasn't funded by any agency. I paid for my education on my own, so I don't have a lot of experience there. Next, how many courses can you take at a time? How many courses should you take at a time? <sighs> I have so much to say about this. Number one, it's up to you. It is up to you. That's the beauty of Athabasca. You can totally customize what courses you take, when you take them, and how you take them. Other than you've just got to make sure you meet your prereqs. If you don't have a prerequisite course, uh, it's going to be harder to take or succeed in a course. But if anything, I would say to determine how many courses you can take or should take, start by looking at the material. How heavy is it? How much work is it going to be? How comfortable are you with the material? Is it going to be really, really easy? Is it going to be really hard for you? If you're really good at the sciences, then taking a humanities is probably going to be a little bit harder for you. You're probably going to want a little extra time. Likewise, if you're an English or a humanities major, taking your science class might take a little longer. So give yourself that time. Some courses, students report being able to do in two days, in three days. And we're going to review easiest and hardest courses in a little bit, but some courses can be done quite quickly. Others can take a while. When everything was said and done with my Psych 290, Psychology as a Social Science course, I honestly could have hammered that thing out in like probably three weeks when everything was said and done. Some can take a week, some can take a full three months or four months or six months. Mix and match and see what you can do. Note though that most full-time students on average take four, maybe five classes. And if you were attending an in-person university where everything was synchronous and you were moving at the same pace as a lot of other people, you'd be taking five courses at a time. Next, how many times can you extend a course? So something unique to Athabasca, because everything is self-directed, we have contract dates on courses. So uh, I'm gonna double check my notes here, a three credit course, you have six months to do, and a six credit course, you have 12 months to do. That said, life happens. Sometimes you need an extension. You need it to, you need more time to complete the course. Athabasca lets you do that. You can extend a course up to three times, two months each. So you can get a maximum up to an additional six months. 
Please note there is a fee for this, and the fee does change. At the time of recording, the fee was $212, but that is up from when I originally started at Athabasca. So check that fee. There is a bit of a fee for it, but you can extend your courses. Next, here's a popular social media question. What do you do if you have a nightmare tutor? Nightmare tutors happen. And with that, actually, let's start with some definitions. You have a prof, an instructor, who is the head of a whole course. They've usually designed it and manipulated it and changed it for their version. That's your prof. That's your instructor. But then the person you're actually going to interact with is a tutor. They're called tutors. All of my tutors have had doctorates. Like, they are doctors. They are full-on, like, very knowledgeable people. The instructor or the prof oversees the tutors. Tutors oversee your course. And I have a few suggestions for what to do if you have a bad tutor. Number one, I want you to figure out if you're having a bad tutor because they're doing things you don't like or if they're actually violating, you know, rules of the university. If they're doing something you don't like, that's your ego. That's you learning how to learn. Check that, which is easier said than done. If they're actually doing something, though, that violates the terms of learning and how learning happens, then we can take action. So one thing you can do if, you, uh, if your tutor makes a mistake, if your tutor marks you in such a way that is not reflected in a rubric, you can challenge them on that. You can say, hey, you deducted marks for something not listed on the rubric. That is grounds to challenge. As always, be an adult about it. You can start by challenging it with the tutor. If you're unhappy with the tutor, then you go to the instructor. If you're unhappy with the instructor's decision or the prof's decision, you can then escalate it. But usually the instructor or the prof is pretty reasonable. They're quite far removed, so they're gonna be quite objective. But only if you can actually prove the instructor has done something against course expectations. Otherwise, if they're not being helpful, if they're not being supportive, I would say ask more. Ask more for help. Ask for more help. Be specific in your clarifying questions and in your request for support. I reviewed a couple emails and email correspondences with like students who had bad tutors. And the big piece of advice I'd give to the students is I said, like, be more specific in your ask. I know this, especially as a teacher, when people say, like, I think your marking was unfair. I would like you to regrade my assignment. Well, what does that mean for it to be unfair? And how do you know that? And how can you prove that? Was it that I was unfair or was I tough? Was I tough or did I follow the rubric and you didn't follow the instructions? So be specific in your requests for support and follow up. And if that doesn't work, then you go to the prof, then you go above and beyond to the university. Last question. What are the easiest courses to take at Athabasca University? <sighs> I have a lot to say about this as well. What's an easy course is completely relative to you. And this is different learner to learner. I'm really good at the social sciences. I pick up on facts, figures, case studies really quickly. Science though, memorizing meticulous tiny details, I'm not good at. Other people are. They, a science person might think a social science is tough, whereas I think a science is tough. Gets asked all the time on social media, and I combed through hundreds of comments to deliver some answers for you. First, I'm going to put it as a graphic on, on this side of the screen. So pause. Please know, uh, just pause it and screenshot it if you need. Take a look at it. But this is what students felt were the easiest courses out of all of Athabasca University. The ones that are colored were repeatedly voted the easiest. That said, I also noticed that there were categories of really easy classes. So even though uh, there were a bunch of courses that got anywhere from just three to five votes, which wasn't as popular as the ones that got included in the screenshot, these were still general categories and uh, subject areas that were the easiest. And you'll notice that uh, almost none of, the, none of these are sciences. But apparently the general categories, the general subject areas that are the easiest courses at Athabasca University, they include communications, some computer science courses, usually the lower levels, the 200s and the 300s, women's and gender studies, educational psychology, cultural studies, and communication studies. Apparently as well, a lot, and I mean an overwhelming number of English courses were deemed easy for people trying to avoid exams. But you've got to be okay with reading and writing because the English courses, and apparently at Athabasca, have a notoriously large amount of reading and writing required. But you have to kind of expect that from an online university that's textbook heavy. Arguably, Let's talk about the hardest courses. Arguably, people said that math 
were the hardest and some of the poorest designed courses. Apparently, so were some of the biology courses. The upper year biology courses were some of the hardest and poorest designed. So be careful with ma uh, biology and math. They may be some of your toughest ones. Whew, that is a lot of information to know about Athabasca University. Comment and let me know, where are you at on your journey with Athabasca? What are you excelling at? What are you struggling with? Comment below so we can start to build and rally a community around it. I will say this, even though I'm leaving Athabasca to go study with another university, and despite some of these tricky nuances and idiosyncrasies of Athabasca, I do love it and I have loved my experience. It's easy, it's, it's easy to get into, it's accessible, it complements courses really well, and I actually plan to, if there's ever a course that I can't take or isn't available through the university that I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna complement it with Athabasca. Make sure to like and subscribe for all things digital marketing, consulting, business, you name it. Otherwise, we'll chat soon. Bye for now.